Once you've created an educator account, you're able to go in and create up to 50 student accounts for your kids to use. What's nice about the student accounts is that they too, like your account, will be able to record full-length videos and to download those videos when they're done. However, um, we highly recommend that you don't allow students to create their own accounts, that you take care of this for them. And we recommend this for the following reasons. First and foremost, Animoto emphasizes, and you probably know this as well, that you wouldn't want your students to use any personal information when creating their accounts. And this can be very difficult to manage if you're allowing students to create their own accounts. Many of them have email addresses that reveal personal information, that sort of thing. Um, so to avoid that sort of hassle, it's a good idea for you to simply set up accounts for them. The other reason that you'd want to do this is that the only way that you can access their accounts in the projects they've created if they haven't downloaded their projects for you is by accessing those accounts through the username and password. So if students create their own username and password, you're not going to be able to do this. And then finally, because you only get 50 educator accounts, and this is also a big reason why you'd want to create these for your students, most likely, unless you teach elementary, you're going to have more than 50 students that are using Animoto at any given time. So students are going to have to share accounts. And so most likely you're not going to want them to do that off of their own personal accounts. This is going to open up all kinds of problems with passwords and that sort of thing. And so in order to create accounts for your students, what you're going to want to do is use a Gmail account as the base account. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to use your Adams 12 account, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, so what you're going to want to do is to create a whole new account to use. And actually, this will come in handy, because any emails that come in about password resets and those sorts of things will come directly to you and won't actually spam your regular email address. They'll go into this new Gmail account. And so in order to create a new Gmail address, you simply go to gmail.com and in the top right hand corner you'll see the option to create an account. You'll click on this and it'll take you to another screen that's going to let you set up an account. So here what I recommend you do is that you set something up really simple and basic that's going to be easy for you and your students to remember. So I'm going to use my actual name as hopefully my students know that and then for my username I'm going to create something again that's going to be easy to remember. So I'm going to use my last name and most likely auto at gmail.com is already taken, so I'm going to do auto class. And we'll see if that's available. Great, it is. Okay, so now I'm going to create a password. Now this particular password is mine and mine alone. Students are not going to be using this password for anything, and so I can make this something that's going to be easy for me to remember, and this is not something that I'm going to be sharing with my students. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. Birthday. You know, I tend to rarely put in my real birthday. I generally kind of mark it a few days, years, and so forth off of what my actual birthday is. Um, and that's just for privacy reasons. So I've got that set up. Gender. Okay. Mobile phone, you don't need to put in. Your current email address, you're going to want to put that in so that if you need to reset your password for any reason, this is where it's going to get sent. So I'm going to put in my Adams12 email address here. Hey, I don't want to set Google as my default home page. And then I have to prove that I'm not a robot, as it tells me here, by typing this CAPTCHA, which can be a trick in and of itself, as you probably know. Hopefully I got that right. And agree to the policies. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. And I'm not going to bother setting up my profile. And I'm going to continue to Gmail. Okay, so here's my new Gmail account that I'm going to be using for all the student Animoto accounts. Once you've set up your Gmail account, the next step is to create your student accounts. And so the nice thing about using Gmail for this purpose is that it's actually very easy to do. If I look at Animoto's instructions for setting up student accounts, scroll down a little bit because we've already registered a Gmail account, the next step for us now okay, is to set up the student accounts by using a derivative of my master Gmail account that I just created. Okay, and so what that means is I take my master account, so this would be my autoclass at gmail.com email address, and I create student accounts based off of that by adding a plus sign followed by, really it can be any character text, but number is going to be the easiest thing for you and your kids to remember. So I would have here autoclass plus one at gmail.com would be my first student account email. Second one would be autoclass plus two at gmail.com and so on and so forth. And so really the easiest way for me to explain this to you really is just to show you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and go in 
and set up a new account in Animoto. So I'm going to go to sign up. Okay. And then right over here is where I'm going to start putting in the email address. So remember, I created a Gmail account for this. So I'm going to say auto class, and then I'm going to add a plus sign. And I'm just going to use the number one because that's going to be easy for me to remember. Okay, so at gmail.com. Okay, so this email, if I sent a message to this, this would actually redirect to my brand new auto class email. But as you can see, it's got a unique username. Okay, for first name and last name for this, I generally also create something generic and I just use the same name over and over again. Students when they create their videos at the end when they produce them can change the creator's name on the video so that's not really a big deal so we'll just say Joe Smith whatever. And then for the password again I try to do something really similar. I highly recommend that you use either the same thing for every student or maybe the same thing based off of the number. So I could either use the word password, for example, or password one, since this is auto class one. Again, something really simple that your students are going to remember and that you're going to remember. And this is another reason why you're going to want to create accounts for your students, because as you know, students are notorious for forgetting passwords. So this will eliminate that problem. And then when it asks you, do you have a promo code? I'm going to click on that, and this is where I would paste in the promotional code that I got when I signed up for my educator account, which I don't have my handy, mine handy right now, so I'm not going to do that. But if I posted that in here, pasted that in here, I'd be able to then have the full educational featured Animoto for my students. And then I say sign up. So now here is my first student Animoto account. So you're going to continue to do this for the greatest number of students that you have in any one of your classes. So let's say you've got 35 students in your largest class, you're going to create 35 Animoto accounts. I highly recommend that you somehow keep track of the usernames and passwords that you create. And so what I tend to do is just create a simple spreadsheet in Google Docs where I'm going to put in username and passwords so that I have that handy. Okay, so I did password. And I'm going to repeat the process. So the next one that I create would be a plus two in the username. And then again, the same password. So what I can do is actually copy this password all the way down as far as many accounts as I'm going to create. Okay, so the next one's going to be auto class plus two. Then we have auto class plus three, so on and so forth. And then I go in and create the Animoto account. So if I have multiple periods of students that are going to be doing this, students in period one, right, one student might be using this particular username and password, student in period two will be sharing this account. So you'll just want to talk to your students about making sure that they don't go in and edit each other's work, so they'll probably want to name their file something that includes their own name so that nobody gets confused. Now the nice thing about being able to create 50 accounts is if you have a student that you know just simply can't be trusted, that they will go in and intentionally mess around with somebody else's project, well even if your largest class is 35, that's going to leave you with an additional 15 accounts that you can create. So if you've got that one little bugger that just is going to go ahead and do whatever they want, you can just give them that additional account and that'll just be theirs alone. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned that you're not going to be able to use your Adams 12 Gmail account for the purpose of setting up Animoto accounts, and that's because derivative accounts don't work with our Adams 12 email accounts. So if you try to take your Adams 12 username, add a plus one at adams12.org, that actually wouldn't wind up going anywhere. So you do have to use a completely different Gmail account for the purposes of setting up student accounts in Animoto. Now another tip for you is that obviously setting up all these accounts can be a little bit tedious. I have found that parent volunteers, student aides, um, anyone that you can get to help you with this will make your life a lot easier. It's really not rocket science. I've had a sixth grader do this for me. I just create the spreadsheet for them of username and passwords real quick and then show them how to create an Animoto account using that information and set them on that task. So, you know, it takes maybe about 20 minutes to 30 minutes to do, but if you don't have to do that yourself, then great. Go ahead and use any helper you can.